Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KeepAdger.com here to bring you another gear view and today I'm talking about fire starting. This little guy right here which is the Prometheus Design Works TI Lighter. It is just what it sounds like. TI standing for titanium and a lighter, i.e. open this guy up, got a little flame going. So what is special about it? Depending on what you do, how you live your life, a lighter may or may not be important for you. Personally, places I go and times a year that I go do them, there can definitely be times where not being able to get a fire started has very real consequences, not positive ones. So usually I will always have ways to start a fire, i.e. I will carry something that will actually give me a flame. And then depending, like this knife right here, Amtac Northman, on the sheath, there is actually a ferro rod right there. So you throw sparks with it. Two different ways, redundancy. I will say when it comes to getting a fire started because you need to start a fire, you absolutely can use a ferro rod, but when like, I need to get something lit, flame is usually where it's at. And yes, I'm fully aware that, hey, you can carry things with you, such as Vaseline soap cotton ball, things like that, that they'll take a spark no matter what. They will. And you know what? They will also take a flame. And there's a lot more materials you can find that will take a flame than will take a spark. Especially, don't know if you noticed, I did. It was just raining and now it stopped. So everything is pretty much wet right now. Granted, you can go find dry stuff, but the like low hanging fruit, i.e. like old man's beer, the moss that hangs from trees, that stuff's gone, like completely useless for throwing sparks into it. So conversely, if you have something with a flame that is exponentially more useful than trying to, especially if things are cold or maybe it's already getting dark, trying to basically get that really nice fluffy tinder to go ahead and throw a spark into. What are some aspects of this that make it very valuable? Well, for one, it's titanium. It's not gonna rust, pretty much indestructible. It's machined out of titanium stock. You have a lanyard hole here, and something that's hard to convey is actually how nice the threads are on this, because, yeah, sometimes things are really coarse. Amazing threads on here. Along here, you also have a seal. There's an O-ring. Why is that important? Well, if you've ever had a Zippo, used it, it's like, oh, this is cool. And then, I don't know, maybe you pull it out a couple days, week later, and surprise, it doesn't work anymore. All the fuel evaporates out because it's not sealed. And so, since this is actually sealed, once you fill it up, you're not gonna have your fuel evaporate out. Inside, you have this body here that you can remove and go ahead and refill it here, as well as remove a little piece right there and go ahead and change out the flints. So this will last pretty much forever. I mean, you can change the wicks out and change the flints out. When you first purchase the lighter, it actually comes in this tin and inside of it, you will have all kinds of goodies. You, right here, you'll have spare flints. You also have this little baggie, which has a spare wick, as well as some more spare flints and some spare O-rings for the seals. And then, of course, you'll have the lighter. Additionally, you can actually take this tin, remove this inner portion, just pulls out, pull all of it out. And now you have a container, which you can go ahead and repurpose into Pretty much anything, a little first aid kit, backcountry survival kit, whatever you want. Throw stuff on there. And then what I usually end up doing with it is I will throw a repurposed piece of inner tube on there, which turns into one, it'll keep this tin closed. And two, you can use this as a fire starter in a bind. If you're in the stats, the body of it is made out of a 6AL4V billet titanium with a lighter core that is brass plated. Dimensionally, it measures about 1.875 inches by 0.66 inches. The tin box measures 3.4 inches by 2.4 inches by 0.4 inches. 
One of the things I like about this lighter is fuel. So some lighters you have to fill with like special butane, things along those lines. This, it'll take Zippo lighter fluid, which is handy, I guess. But what's even handier is it'll take gasoline. And since I, that's usually what I use in like my Whisperlite International stove or my vehicles for that matter, I usually have gas cans around. So being able to just pull the lighter body out, fill it with gasoline, and done, call it good. And eventually when you need to refill it, again, gasoline. Makes it really easy. And that's pretty much my go-to fuel. Are there any limitations to this? Yes, there are. It is a really small lighter. So with that, you don't have a big windscreen or anything like that. So when you try and get this thing started, if the wind's blowing, can blow it out. You need to protect it, find somewhere protected to get this going if it is windy out, or for that matter, any elements. And if you end up getting your hands cold, wet, things like that, when you go to spark it, kind of fine motor skills. So it may turn into you using part of your body to spark it rather than just your thumb because it's small and there's no free lunch, but also it's small. And it has this lanyard hole, which you can put a lanyard on it. You can dummy cord it to gear. It can turn into a keychain, in which case, as long as you have your keys, you always have a method of starting fires. So basically cuts both ways with respect to the size. Can you buy this lighter from Prometheus Design Works? No, you can't. They no longer have this one. So if you're unfamiliar with Prometheus Design Works, Here's how it basically works. They will come up with a product, a design, whether it's a style of pants or a lighter, and they will incrementally kind of make little improvements. Maybe with respect to pants, for example, maybe using different materials or with this, little design improvements. So yes, you can still get the TIFS, Titanium Fire Starter, the lighter, but it is different. So still made out of that stock titanium, all your dimensions, everything like that. It's the same, except it is actually more aggressively textured, so much so that it kind of resembles World War II pineapple grenade, which was the inspiration for the design, which does a couple things. One, there's the aesthetic to it. And then two, especially if your hands are cold, don't have a lot of dexterity, it just makes it easier to manipulate. Whereas this one, is smoother and if your hands are wet and cold arguably harder to manipulate so think of it as an upgrade it is also black dlc coated and we come to price how much does it cost 57 bucks you're like i could get for five dollars you know what you couldn't get for five dollars a lighter machined here in the u.s out of titanium sorry you couldn't and if this is out of your price range it's out of your price range, no worries. But if you want something small, pretty much bomb proof that will last probably generations, this is kind of a hot ticket. And yes, $57, arguably expensive, especially if you literally just commute to work on the subway or something like that. Maybe it's not worth it. If you are somewhere, maybe out on adventures, maybe a road trip for that matter, in inclement weather, in the snow, whatever it is, and you end up sliding off the road, maybe weather comes in when you're out backpacking, whatever it is, and you need to get a fire started. If someone said, hey, for 57 bucks, do you want this lighter? I'll get a fire started right now. Don't have to be out there with your bow drill right now. Uh, you'd probably throw down like 57 bucks, like right then and there. So in context of that, if this can keep you out of a bad situation, is it worth that 57? Absolutely, all day long. Again, it's small, it's light. Put it on a keychain, put it on a lanyard, clip it to your pack, whatever it may be. I think it's pretty cool. If you end up picking one up and have experience with it, let me know how it does for you. And if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's just liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbadger.com, picking up KBAT target pads, stickers, patches, any of that stuff. Or if you want, pick up shirts through Teespring or Ballistic Inc. Or Patreon if you want to support me directly. Appreciate all of it. It helps me get out, create more content for you. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.